Oliver, it looks like Heineken has finally managed to gain control of um, Asia Pacific breweries or is, is reaching towards a, a resolution to this very intriguing battle that uh, it was engaged in to, 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 to buy it. Um, it looks, you know, this is a big step for Heineken into Asia. I, I just wonder where it fits into the wider picture for the brewing company. Well, for Heineken, this is uh, a deal that uh, it's been on the cards for a long time. It's owned uh, about 40 odd percent of Asia Pacific breweries for mm. many, many years. It set it up as a joint venture with Fraser and Neve in the first place. So it's, it's had an interest in, in it for a long time, but it's never taken full control. Yeah. And now it's, it's uh, managed to more or less take full control. It's come to an agreement with one of the other actors in this in this multi-act drama. Right. To, but I, to I wonder why it wanted to have control when it already had a good big stake in it. Um, I guess it has to do with positioning in the market. It does, yes. There, were, there was the, the risk that if it didn't get control of it, it could potentially lose the whole thing, mm. or it, it could have had to share its, its shareholding with a major rival. Mm. So it, it really wants to take the opportunity now to, to take full control. What it gives them is uh, firstly a boost to turnover, adding in um, the rest of uh, Asia Pacific breweries' mm. revenues will add about 10% to, mm. to annual profit. Yeah. So that, that's certainly welcome. But more importantly, these are uh, these are high growth markets. It's a, a market leader in, in areas such as Malaysia and Indonesia, and a very strong position in Vietnam and a good position in China. Yeah. So the, yeah. those are the markets that Heineken really wants to get to. And crucially for Heineken and for its investors, it's less well represented in emerging markets than some of the other big brewing groups. Particular SAB Miller and AB InBev, the, the two other big global brewing groups, mm. much stronger in emerging markets than Heineken is. Yeah. So taking control of Asia Pacific Brewery really, it, it cements Heineken's position in these high growth markets. It's not very cheap though, is it? I mean, this is a big price they're paying. It is a very big price they're paying um, on some estimates. It's about 17 times earnings mm. before interest tax, depreciation, mm. amortization. Um, according to research from Bernstein, that's the third most expensive brewing deal ever. But um, unfortunately for the big brewing majors, this is the way things are going. Prices are steadily rising. Yeah. The, the five most expensive deals have been have all been in the past two years. And there's been a lot of M&A in the, in the brewing sector over the last few years. And, and, and I mean, is it, where are we, I wonder, in that cycle? Are we at the end of it? Are we in the middle of it? Or? Well, we're, we're sort of in the middle of it. Yeah. In, in a, lot of the, a lot of markets, there's not much more to go for, particularly Latin America, there's not much more. But in Asia, the majors have a fairly low market share um, as compared with the, the kind of market shares they have elsewhere in the world. There's still lots of small local brewers, so mm. there's still lots of uh, M&A to be done. But a lot of these local brewers will be family controlled, and they're looking at the prices being paid for APB and also the, the price that um, AB InBev paid for Grupo Modelo earlier in the year, another in emerging markets deal, also quite expensive. Yeah. And they'll be looking at these prices and thinking, well, hang on, there's a, there's a big profit to be made yeah. here. Uh, it's interesting. Hi <coughs> so Heineken has finally reached a, uh, near the end of its attempt to, to buy Asia Pacific breweries. Uh, it's an expensive deal, but probably an important one from Heineken's perspective. Thanks, Oliver.